In a way, he's almost tricking us with these bright colors and the comedy that he uses to teach us something. Kind of in the way you trick a child to teach them something. Hey everybody, my name is Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan, but right now I'm traveling through Japan. And because I'm in Japan, I decided to watch a film by one of the great Japanese directors, Yoshijiro Ozu. And Ozu, you've probably heard of, because he is not only one of the great Japanese directors, he's one of the greatest directors to have ever lived. This actually is the first Ozu film I've ever seen. And the first film that I decided to watch was a film called Good Morning. Good Morning is about two young children who would like to get a TV set from their mother and father. But because their mother and father refuse, because they don't have enough money to buy this TV set, the children get upset and in an act of protest decide to stop talking. They don't talk at school, they don't say good morning to the neighbors anymore, they don't say anything. At first the parents are pretty happy that the children are not gonna talk. They think, oh, what kind of punishment is this? But after a while they realize how important it is for the children to speak to their teacher, to them, tell them that they're hungry, things like this. At first glance, this movie seems very lighthearted, and it is, it's a comedy, and it's kind of like a family comedy reminiscent of a 50s sitcom, similar to something like I Love Lucy. But upon deeper inspection, the film is actually very sophisticated in both its technical execution and in the themes that it's trying to discuss. The first thing that stuck out to me and will probably stick out to you is how beautiful the colors are in this film. Typically Ozu shot in black and white, but in some of his later films he used color. And the way that he used color in this movie is pretty amazing. You know, you're dealing with children so he uses a lot of interesting colors in their rooms and in the spaces that they occupy and it adds a light-hearted feel to the movie which helps to mask the more serious themes that Ozu is discussing. In a way he's almost tricking us with these bright colors and the comedy that he uses to teach us something kind of in the way you trick a child to teach them something. He wants to talk about society and social dynamics and things that are very serious, but he does so in a really fun way. He uses this sitcom style, which is very lighthearted, kind of mindless viewing, something you would watch on the TV that the children want. But he uses this style to talk about something that he really wants to say about society. And of course, we can't talk about Ozu without talking about his framing. The way that he uses the camera is pretty dang amazing. The framing is very low. Everything is very low to the ground. He keeps the camera in the perspective of the children. We feel like we're watching adults, observing them as children, or even a visiting relatives sitting in this house, kind of watching this little drama unfold. Another really interesting thing he does is utilize the frames of houses like these old houses. For example, these windows will open up and you'll see the house next door. You'll see through doorways into other doorways, across the street, into the next house. He uses these frames within frames all throughout. And what it does is it gives you this feeling that all the houses are connected. All of the families in this suburb are kind of watching each other and in a way it makes it a little unsettling. You don't know whose house is whose. You don't know where you are. None of the spaces seem private, which I think is what he's trying to convey in that this suburban environment, no one has any privacy. All of the families are gossiping with each other and watching each other. Ozu also breaks the director's line quite effortlessly. He is Apparently, as this is the first film of his I've seen, famous for doing this, but in this film, the way that he moves through the houses is very interesting because he shoots, he shoots very, uh, I would say, linearly. He shoots one side of the scene and then he moves immediately to the other side of the scene. Um, I'm curious if he does this to switch perspectives. He gives you the perspective of the children, then switches immediately to the other side to give you the perspective of the adults. It's a very effective technique and the way that he utilizes it is not at all jarring. He breaks this 180 degree rule, which you're always told not to do, but he does so in a way that doesn't feel strange at all. The way that he directs the actors is also very impressive. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the younger child in this movie, he is the cutest child in cinema. The way that he says, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. 
And when the children decide to stop talking and they develop sign language, when he's upset, he kind of uses his hand and goes like this. I can tell that Ozu really knew how to direct these young people. He gave them these little physical kind of mannerisms and told them to do them when they were supposed to feel certain emotions. This is my guess anyway. So for example, the smaller child, he says, when you're angry, you go like this. And the other kid, when you're upset, you flip your hair. And it adds this level of character to these two children that is, that is very endearing. So as the expert director that he is, Ozu uses all of this technical brilliance to discuss important themes. And of course, the most often talked about theme of an Ozu film are generational divides. In this film, we're discussing rebellious children. Uh, they want this TV and the parents don't want to give it to them. And so the children act out. In this movie, they act out in a very innocuous way, in a kind of fun way. They stop talking and it's all very lighthearted and fun. But as a viewer, you can see how this could be a more serious thing. Basically what's happening is the children are deciding they don't want to be a part of their family anymore. They don't want to talk to anybody in their family anymore. And if you consider this metaphorically, this is a very serious problem. And we see it in society all the time. Children who don't want to be around their family, who leave home, who act out in more, I would say, dangerous ways. I would say that this movie is kind of a a cute story of children who want a TV, they can't get it, so they stop talking. But in reality, we can extrapolate this onto greater society and think about all the children who do other things because of the way that their parents treat them. The parents in this film don't understand their children and as a result act very smug. They think, oh, you're not gonna talk, that's great. They don't try to understand their children's perspective. This is the divide between the generations. The oldest generation in this film also experiences a divide where there's an old mother uh, who one of the women threatens to send to a home. So all of the different generations don't know how to communicate with each other in this film. Communication is the other very important theme. The children decide to stop talking. So obviously communication is an important thing that Ozu is trying to talk about. And I think the interesting thing that Ozu does with his themes is that he presents all sides of it. So he's discussing communication and he is both presenting the need for it. He discusses why we need small talk. We, it makes people feel at ease. We see that. We see that when the children stop saying good morning to the neighbors, everybody feels uncomfortable. They don't know what to do. It kind of builds bad blood. The neighbors think that that uh, that family is mad at them and told the children not to say good morning. So Ozu does understand the necessity of it, but he's also criticizing it. He shows how how small talk prevents us from developing real connections with people. There is a, a side plot where, where the older sister, I believe it's the older sister, she's taking English lessons from a man and they obviously are in love with each other, but they can't ever say anything to each other except for small talk. At the end of the film, there's this very brilliant scene where they're obviously enamored with each other and want to tell each other how much they love each other, but instead all they do is just talk about the weather and wonder if it's gonna rain tomorrow, and it's maddening. You just want them to say, hey, do you wanna go on a date? But they can't do it. All they can do is say, oh, that's a nice looking cloud over there. And so Ozu is also kind of showing us how this simple thing, this small talk is in a way destroying society. It's making it so that we can't actually have real conversations with each other because of this veil of politeness that we've put up. Consumerism. He also discussed consumerism and he is very wary of it. He shows how the men in this suburban area, their only job becomes to sell appliances. Like all the other jobs are getting replaced and all of the men are going around trying to sell TVs and sell washing machines and Everybody wants to buy these products and it's making them a little bit silly. But also, he is showing that, you know, wanting to have these things isn't necessarily bad either. Children go to a family's house next door to watch TV and they're this like hip young couple and they're presented as being very open-minded and very cool and very fun and happy. And so I don't think Ozu is saying giving into consumerism is necessarily bad. He's presenting both sides of this of this uh, this idea showing that, yeah, maybe it's not a good thing that we're buying so much stuff, but also at the same time, 
Maybe it's fine. Look at these people. These people are happy. They're they're content. They live a good life. He talks about conformity. In some ways, he shows that conformity is necessary for society to function. Uh, in the middle of the film, while the children aren't talking, they don't have anything to eat. They don't have any food. And as a result, they're forced to become antisocial in a way, break out of society. And they go into another family's house and they steal their rice and they run out into a field. And at first they think, oh, this is great. This is great fun. We're being so bad. We're, being, we're eating this rice out in the field. They feel really good. But then when they see a policeman come towards them, they get scared and they run away. And they are missing for a night and the parents can't find them. And so he's showing that in some ways conforming and doing what society tells you to is good. It keeps you safe. It keeps you happy. The parents care about you. They just want you to do the right thing. So you should listen and do what they say. On the other hand, you know, conformity is also making people uncomfortable in this society. I mentioned the hip couple that has the TV that the children go over to watch. They end up leaving this suburban town because everybody's always gossiping about them. Everybody's always thinking that they're weird and talking about them and looking into their house through the, uh, through the other houses in that interesting framing that Ozu does. You know, they, they are just these people that are, that are embracing new society. They like listening to jazz. They like dancing in the street. They're a happy couple. They don't act like the other people in the village and so they're judged for it saying talking to people the children they just want to be able to not have to talk and because they don't talk causes all these problems which is kind of an interesting thing to think that if you don't do things with the grain if you do things even a little bit different just not saying good morning to somebody everything in society gets thrown out of whack i do think he is a little wary of conformity he is a little saying he's saying a little something which brings me to the most interesting part of this film, in my opinion, which is the fart joke that opens the, the beginning of the movie. So the children are walking at the very beginning of the movie and they play a little game where one of them touches the other one on the head and then they fart on command and each one tries it. One of the children isn't able to do it. When the, he tries to fart on command, he actually poops his pants. When the movie opened with this scene, I was thinking, what am I watching? <laughs> very low brow. I didn't understand what this was about. As you watch the whole movie and you see the themes that Ozu is presenting, the very end of the film, he does this little joke again. We see the boys all trying to fart on command and the final boy tries and he poops his pants. What I realized as I was watching this fart joke is that this is the essence of what Ozu is trying to say with this film, is that we all want to fit in. And even if it's something stupid like farting on command, we all try our best to fit in. And even if we poop our pants when we try to fart, we still keep trying to do it because it's worse for us to not fit in. Even though we're hurting ourselves, even ultimately not a good thing, we're going to poop our pants. That's not good. We don't want that. But we do it because everybody else can do it. Everybody else can fart on command, so we have to try to fart on command. And a kid who can't, a kid who poops his pants, is going to be ostracized. He can't go to school. His mother yells at him. It's actually a very profound fart joke, which is very funny. When the movie ended this way, I thought, man, this is a really brilliant director. He's able to take this stupid, I mean, it's really dumb, this dumb fart joke. And he's able, he was able to make me think about society and make me think about the way that we act and the way that humans are, which I think is a really cool thing. I think it's pretty impressive because I know a lot of his other works are very serious uh, very dramatic and they talk about these very heavy deep themes but this kind of light comedy almost like a kids movie childish film also talks about these same heavy themes and in my opinion it makes it almost more effective because we're able to move along in this fun light-hearted way but we're also able to think deeply about the world and society and how we interact with each other you know it's made in the 50s but it's still very watchable and there's a lot to unpack and a lot to think about and a lot to discuss. So uh, I will see you guys next time. I'll be talking about more Japanese cinema in the near future. And let me know what you guys want me to discuss in the comments. See you guys next time. I love you.